It is October of 1986. The movie is set in the Hwaesong province of South Korea, where a woman has been found dead near a field. The cops are immediately informed by the villagers, and head detective Park Dumon arrives at the scene. He checks inside a sewer and finds the decomposing body of the victim. It is clear that she was treated inappropriately before her murder. After inspecting the scene, Dumon returns to the station and starts interrogating various suspects for the crime. However, the process is very tedious as he uses a typewriter. Dumon takes pictures of all the suspects and Kwon Kiok, a female detective, arranges them in a book. He stares them in their eyes as he believes he can identify the perpetrator through eye contact. Just then, they are informed that another woman has been murdered in the same area. Dumon rushes to the scene and finds a footprint, which he assumes can serve as a clue. Unfortunately, before he can have a better look at it, a tractor drives over the footprint and destroys it. As a result, Dumont ends up back at the station without any evidence collected. I hope he arrested that tractor. Several months pass by and it appears as if the case has gone cold. But one day, Dumont learns from his girlfriend that Bayek, a mentally scarred, handicapped boy, had been stalking the second victim before her death. Finally finding a clue, he immediately brings Bayek to the station and interrogates him. Then Dumont, along with another colleague, beat him up mercilessly. They try to force a confession out of him, but the poor guy only had admits that he was stalking her. In the next scene, a man is seen approaching a woman on a silent road. He tries asking for directions to a certain place, but she does not respond. This is because everyone in the town has become terrified due to the recent murder cases. The woman tries to run away, but only ends up falling in a heap. Just then, Dumont appears and instantly jumps on the man, assuming that he is attacking the girl. Later, he learns that the man is Xiao Taiyun, a detective from Seoul who has volunteered to assist with the case. On their way to the station, Dumont goes to the crime scene, makes a footprint with Bayek's shoes, and takes a picture. He then goes back to the station and tries to beat a confession out of Bayek. This time, however, he shows the photos of the fake shoe prints. Despite this, Bayek still denies being related to the murder. Fed up, the detectives take Bayek to a field and threaten to bury him alive. So, the latter hesitantly starts explaining what happened that day. He reveals that the victim was strangled with her bra first, and then tied with her stockings. So far, this all sounds hot, Bayek. When did things start going downhill. Hearing this, the detectives are shocked, as back then in Korea, crimes like murder and physical assault were less prevalent. They demand to know more, but when Bayek says, I don't know, they start beating the hell out of him. The next day, Bayek is declared the killer, and is taken for a spot inspection in front of the reporters. Fortunately, Taiyun arrives in the nick of time and interrupts them. He checks Bayek's hands, which are severely scarred, and asserts that there is no possible way he could have tied the knots around his victims. Hearing this, the villagers realize that Bayek is being framed, and so they attack the officers. They are willing to support their local friend no matter what. In the following scene, we are introduced to Taiyun's new colleague, Shin Dongchul, who has been transferred to lead their team. Dongchul gets straight to work and asks the other officers if there were any similarities between the murders. However, they're speechless, simply because they have spent their entire time framing an innocent man when they could have gone after the real killer. Fortunately, the smart guy, Taiyun, briefs them that all the murders happened during rainy days, and the victims wore red clothes. Then, Dong Chul asks if both the victims died the same way, too. But Taiyun's answer surprises all of them. He reveals that there were three victims, among which one is yet to be found. It turns out that in the past week, a third girl who was wearing red clothes went missing on a rainy day. In no time, the third body is found, and Taiyun is proven right. The police then confirm the murder pattern and regard the case as a serial killing. Since the cases have too many similarities, Dong Chul suggests they prepare for the next time it rains, as that is when the killer is likely to strike. One day, while the detectives are helping suppress a student rebellion, it suddenly starts raining. All of them get ready to implement the plan. The female detective, Kui Ok, dresses in red and walks around the area where the murders took place, hoping to lure the killer. Unfortunately, even after hours of waiting, no one arrives. Hence, the detectives head to a check post where they meet two schoolgirls. One of them tells a story about an assumed killer who apparently hides in the toilet throughout the day and only comes out at night. Stiff competition for Oscar the Grouch. As expected, the detectives find the story <laughs> hilarious, and they simply laugh it off. Meanwhile, we see a lady at home, listening to the radio when she gets a call. The person on the other end asks her to immediately visit him. The lady, who is wearing a red jacket, decides to switch it, hoping she doesn't
doesn't get attacked. Once she gets out of her house, she starts humming a song to keep herself distracted. But just as she reaches the field, she hears someone whistling, which makes her stop in her tracks. The woman knows what's lurking in the dark, so she attempts to make a run for it. Unfortunately, before she can call for help, a man suddenly pounces on her. The next day, the detectives find her lifeless body. The rainy day toilet boy strikes again. Just like the others, she has been strangled to death with her own undergarments. Later, at the police station, Kwiok insinuates that she has something important to show. She brings what looks like a list of songs played on the radio, and reveals that the same song was played every time a murder occurred. Kwiok further discloses that a person requested the song to be played on rainy days, which coincidentally matched the murder dates. Dumon just laughs it off, which is ridiculous. What kind of detective does Dumon think he is? But Dong Chul and Tai Yun look for information regarding it. Hoping to find the postcard with the song request, Tai Yun goes to the radio station, but ends up disappointed, as they have already thrown it away. Dumon, on the other hand, goes to the crime scene with one of his colleagues, Yun Ho, and spreads a talisman around, believing that the perpetrator's face will appear on it after it dries. Just then, they hear some footsteps approaching, prompting them to hide in the bushes. The two believe that it is the murderer, but to their dismay, Tai Yun has arrived to inspect the scene. But suddenly, they hear another person approaching, so Tai Yun also hides on the other side. After a while, a man appears and starts pleasuring himself to a woman's lingerie. Probably just a coincidence. The detectives witness this and become disgusted. Just as Yoon Ho is ready to move, he accidentally makes a sound that alerts the man, prompting him to run away. The detectives also run after him and eventually catch him near a construction site. After taking the pervert into custody, they question him mercilessly. However, the man claims that he didn't murder anyone. He was only fulfilling one of his sick fantasies. As the investigation continues, the detectives Detectives find out that the pervert is actually a very diligent person who takes good care of his family. Outside, the villagers find out about it and start protesting for the release of the man. They are fed up with police brutality and discrimination. Hey, let us be perverts, you guys! Yeah, let us kill people. I mean, let, let us be perverts, yeah. Frustrated that the investigation is going nowhere, Tai Yun goes to meet the girls who told him about the rumored murderer hiding in public toilets. After talking to them, he goes to the said toilet and finds a woman there. Initially, she doesn't open the door, but when Tai Yun mentions that he is a detective, she agrees to help. The woman then leads him to a house where the rumors began. It belongs to an extremely terrified lady who is a survivor of a similar attack. Tai Yun listens to her story and realizes that the lady was also attacked by the serial killer they are looking for. However, the only use piece of information he learns is that the perpetrator had very soft hands. So, he rushes back to the station and checks the pervert's hands. When he confirms that they are not soft, he lets the innocent man go, much to the annoyance of Dumon. Just then, Kwiok turns on the radio, where the murderer's song is playing. Coincidentally, it has started raining as well. Realizing that a murder is about to take place, Kwiok rushes to the radio station to get the postcard. Unfortunately, just after an hour, they find another dead body. She has something stuck in her private part. It is a small piece of peach. On the other hand, Kwiok finally finds the postcard at the radio station and learns that it belongs to Hyun Gyu, a factory worker. They immediately take him into custody and the first thing Tai Yoon does is check his hands. Surprisingly, it fits the description as they are really soft. They then interrogate him and mention that the killing started happening after he moved to that place. Hyun Gyu admits to sending the postcards but denies killing anyone. He tells them that he won't fall into confusion confessing about something he didn't do. This angers the detectives, but they can't punish him, owing to the fact that they already have a bad reputation among the general public. When they confront him about the peaches, Hyun Gyu starts getting uncomfortable and lashes out at them. Assuming he is the killer, Yoon Hu gets mad and beats him to a pulp, resulting in his own expulsion from the case. Now that the team is again back to square one, they decide to follow up on all their previous clues again. When they play Bayek's confession, they finally realize that he explained the incident as a by Standard. So, the detectives make their way to Bayek's family restaurant. On reaching there, they find an intoxicated Yoon Ho, who gets into a fight with random people. Suddenly, Bayek arrives at the scene and hits Yoon Ho with a wooden board that pierces his leg with a rusty nail. Realizing what he has done, Bayek flees and unintentionally arrives at the scene of the first murder. Soon, Dumon and Tai Yoon also arrive. They again begin coercing him for more information. Bayek finally gives in and tells them that he saw the killer's face three times 
Thinking that they are close to solving the case, they show him Hyun Gyu's picture, but Bayek instead starts rambling about a house fire. Suddenly, an angry mob of villagers approaches the detectives to teach them a lesson. This scares poor Bayek, and he starts running here and there aimlessly. Unfortunately, he doesn't notice an approaching train and gets struck, resulting in an instant death. The next day, with the news all over, the police station gets a lot of calls. One of them is from the forensics lab, revealing that a semen sample was found. The only problem is that the technology in Korea is too primitive to inspect it. This cum is too mysterious, sir. So, they have to send the semen sample to the US and wait for the results. Meanwhile, Duman gets some devastating news from the hospital. It turns out Yoon Ho's leg has to be amputated due to the spread of tetanus caused by the rusty nail. Somewhere else, a woman is on her way to work. She is walking extremely cautiously because of the news she has been hearing lately. Shortly after, a schoolgirl walks past her. Despite the scary situation, the two don't even interact with one another. Suddenly, a man approaches the schoolgirl from behind and takes her away. He then ties her up, does mean things to her, and finishes her off brutally. The next day, Taeyoon rushes towards the scene filled with reporters. The body of the schoolgirl has been found, and by the looks of it, the culprit is yet again the serial killer. Taeyoon realizes that the victim is the same girl who directed him to the toilet woman. Devastated that he couldn't help her, he dashes towards Hyun Gyu and starts beating him up. Taeyoon also brings out his gun, ready to finish him off. But just then, Du Man appears with the DNA results of the semen. It reveals that Hyun Gyu is actually innocent. With this, the detectives are once again back to square one, with no clues of who the murderer is. So, a few days later, the case is eventually closed. The movie then skips to the year 2003, where Dumont is having breakfast with his family. He is now retired from the force and has become a successful businessman. One day, he goes to the same crime scene, which was once filled with the dead bodies of women. Dumont looks at the drain where he found the first body, when suddenly, a little girl walks up to him. She reveals that another man was checking the drain some time ago, just like him. The movie ends as a shocked Dumont looks at the camera, realizing that the killer may still be around. The movie the movie is based on a true story about South Korea's first serial killer. In total, he killed 15 women, and the case remained unsolved for 30 long years. When Memories of Murder was released, the case was still a mystery. But in 2020, using the help of advanced medical forensics, the killer was finally revealed to be Lee Chun Jai. He is now serving a life sentence. Too bad they couldn't catch him earlier, so this 